Hi, um, I just want to do a quick review of the Mercedes A180. Um, I've got mine going back uh, today because I'm actually going overseas for a bit. Um, but I thought it'd be a good uh, thing to do because I've actually had the car for about 20,000 miles, nearly a year. Um, because I know a lot of the car reviews you see are from people that are just driving it for the day or whatever. They don't really know a car. Um, you know, okay, they can go, oh look, the steering wheel's like this. There's stuff that's in the manual. Anyway, what I want to show you is the good points and the bad points for the Mercedes A180. Um, it's, first thing, it, the looks of it is very sporty. Um, to have a look outside. It's, it's quite a sleek looking car. Um, the bonnet curves down the back sort of rounds in and as you can see it goes up and over and then the back drops down quite quite steeply interior wise seats are pretty good very sporty looking and quite nice outside but that same sporty look is where some of the problems are uh, first thing is because it drops down at the back and then sort of like it's got a narrow window at the back and it curves round. The view out the back is pretty useless. Um, you might as well have board that up because you can't tell any uh, judge distances from that window. It's terrible. The front, exactly the same problem. It curves down. Oh, sorry, different problem, same, same issue. It curves down so you can't judge the length of the bonnet because there's nothing there to uh, gauge it against, which isn't really a big issue, but if you're not a confident uh, person for parking, you might have issues with it. Wing mirrors, same problem. Curves down, but you've got no, because it rounds at the back, you can't see the end, the back of the vehicle to judge a distance very well. Um, because the sides curve, the the pillar for leaning on on the window is too high up. Um, not a biggie, but when you're in long on long journeys. I like to sit there with my arm and just relax. You can't really do it in this. You can you get used to it, but at the same time, the pillar's too high. And if you jack the seat up, the ceiling's too low. <laughs> those are the those are the bad sides. Um, the good sides, miles per gallon. Although I think they push it at about 78 mpg. I get about. 55 to 60 um, and some of those runs are like 300 miles on the motorway so if I'm not getting up to 65 70 it's either there's something wrong with this car or something wrong with their figures um, very difficult to reach the mpgs that they're selling this vehicle on because I've got the diesel version by the way um, the they have a nice little box here um, handy for keeping your phone in and odd bits and pieces um, it's got a USB socket and a headphone socket and uh, the USB wires into the the dashboard for the audio system you can put an mp3 player in there um, everything can be controlled by this dial here as you can see um, you can connect a, a telephone to the system and also an mp3 or in my case I have a Samsung Note um, which I connect to the audio system. Uh, the reason for that is I forward my calls to my work phone. So the telephone's my work phone and the audio system is my Samsung. Um, so I can still answer every call at the same time I've, I've got my audio system working. So you can connect two Bluetooth device, uh, devices at the same time, but you can connect two telephones uh, as telephones, um, which probably something that will be a next generation thing um, because obviously if you've got several people in the car they might actually all want to connect to the phone at some point anyway um, I do like the the everyone hates this display uh, but once you've been in here a while you get used to it but also because of the size of it and its location it's, it's in the right place um, it's not there's nothing negative to say about this um, it does everything you want it to do um, okay, it's bolted on the front, but you get used to that. It doesn't really bother you once you're actually using the car. It's, it's. I think it's German engineering. Uh, people think cosmetic, where German engineering is about functionality. 
and it's very functional. Um, the blowers work very well, the aircon works very well. Um, you've got the double blowers for the, the back and front windows, which as you can see, they kick in quite well. AC works well. If it'll switch on, I might not switch on windows. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to switch the blowers off to switch that on. But everything works great on there. Uh, you've got the circulation inside the cab. Um, speed control, temperature. It's all pretty good, basic stuff. Um, the design, the dashboard and everything's nice. Um, the anti-jacking thing, <laughs> when you pull away the car doors out, automatically lock, which is useful, but when you're picking people up, you've got to remember that it's up there because I'm always locking people up. Uh, what I was going to say about the car. Would I recommend them for somebody else? Well, let's put it this way. I'm going away for a few months and I'm hoping to get another one of these when I get back. Um, the, view, the vision issue is the main one in this car. Um, if I had a screen with a reversing camera, that would fix that. Um, but it's a nice car, it's comfortable. You get a bit of motorway noise. I think the seal between the doors and the interior aren't very good. Um, the reason I think that is because when I open the door I can see a load of crap that blows up um, from the motorway which tells me that's where the air is getting in creating the, the noise uh, when you're driving um, so that's something that could be improved by Mercedes um, general quality is okay I wouldn't say it's fantastic um, I think the Mercedes have got a bit mass market which is sort of okay but their quality has been going down steadily for the last few years. Um, it's not. If it was my money, I wouldn't spend twenty-six thousand pounds on this car. I think there's other options out there. But if I'm not paying for it and using it, I'll choose it um, because it's a nice, nice-looking car. It's fairly comfortable. Um, it's got everything where I want it. Um, the display is good. The, the other thing that you know if you buy like um, McDonald's drinks or something you know you get those plastic uh, the, the paper cups they don't fit in the holders um, not a major thing because they're I believe they're trying to make it illegal now in the UK to drink driving um, even with a McDonald's um, but you know if you're driving for like five hours or something it is nice to actually have these little things that make life easier for you uh, besides that, the, in, the seats are very good. Um, it's a little bit tight in the back if you're a passenger, but at the same time, it's, it's a car I don't really use for um, other people in it. It's a work vehicle for me. But as a family car, I wouldn't buy it. Um, it would be the boots okay, but with the seats and everything, it might be a little bit tight on a regular basis. Um, but beyond that it's a nice car um, I'd probably give it a 7 out of a 10 um, what lets it down is basically the, the vision issues um, because it, the energy the engine runs really well it's, it's pretty quick but also um, it wants to go it's not it's not sluggish um, it will do over 115 miles an hour no problem without even trying um, uphill so it's not it's not a car that's sluggish it's not a car that's slow um, even with a small engine I believe this one's 1 1.5 1.6 liter um, it's got everything there that you need as a driver and from a business point of view it's got the nice look it's got the right looks for a business use um, but £26,000, I'd have a look and see if you can get a better deal or try and get a good deal on one of these because I, the way Mercedes are pushing it, I assume there's a lot of uh, good offers out there. Um, I get this for free, so I can't really judge on that. But it's a good car, good stereo, reliable, typical Mercedes. All right, cheers.